Hi, my name is Alex Hutchinson. I'm lead designer on this year's Sims 2 for console. This is our world map screen, which is the console version of the PC's neighborhood screen, which highlights all 16 of our cool locations in an iconic fashion. And it's a great place to kick off, go straight into create a sim and create a cool little character to take you through a day in the life of a sim. This is Create a Sim, one of the coolest features in the game. We've taken all the best bits from previous versions of The Sims and added in a slew of new options to really give you the best creative character system, I think, on console. Here you can see some of the new options which get down to the level of being able to grab facial features and morph them, to grab the eyes, nose and mouth of each character and tweak them individually. You can do that with body as well. You can make a fat sim or a reasonably sort of portly sim at least. You can make a, a scrawny sim with stick arms. Here you see our version of genetics, which allows you to randomly generate grandparents and parents for your character. Uh, aliens can be generated, as you can see. So you can then go in and, again, change all the different facial features, the haircuts and the, uh, the different clothing options. You can apply tattoos to your characters. Some of these features are locked or unlocked depending on who you've formed relationships with in the game. So you're always coming back into Create a Sim and continuing to customise your character. Here you can see one of the coolest new features which is the ability to layer clothing. And now we get into Aspiration which is bringing across four of the aspirations from Sims 2 PC and adding a new creativity aspiration to the console which comes back into the creative fashion you just saw and will tie into the creative food system which we'll show you later on. And you can also choose their personality. Both aspiration and personality affect the wants and fears that are generated by the game. So if you have a romance based sim, they'll have a lot of urges to do romantic things, or a creative sim will have creative urges. The first thing you'll notice here on our uh, starting lot is direct control. For the first time ever in a Sims game, you have the ability to drive your sim directly around the world. Uh, and interact with objects and characters. And for those people who prefer uh, the traditional control method, we have classic control. So you still can uh, switch out, queue up actions for your character. Here you see another new feature which we call passive awareness. Your sims are more aware than ever of their environment. If they stand over trash, they'll, they'll fan their nose and lose hygiene. If they stand near a radio, they'll snap their fingers. If they stand near a TV, they'll watch it. There are 350 new objects in the game, which is really exciting, including just the first ever trampoline in The Sims. Each one of these is based around the core Sims gameplay of looking after your character. So basically you have eight knees that you can see on screen to the left there, which you need to take care of. We also have a new social mode. Because you're in direct control, we really wanted to bring you in closer to the action. So you can see here, you're really entire, you have full camera control. You've met someone on the left, which completes a, a want, a gold want. Uh, and as your social options uh, change on the right, you can choose what kind of relationship you want to set with people. We've jumped ahead a bit and made a friend. You see here now new options such as hit on become available. And if this succeeds, we'll switch to a more romantic relationship. We've also got split screen two player. So everything you'll see in this demo is available in two player. They can socialize with each other as you can see here, or they can play through the entire story mode or the entire free play mode as well. As I said earlier, all of the Sims have their own unique wants and fears. By completing these, you earn aspiration points. Aspiration points, as you can see here, unlock objects in the buy catalog. Every environment you see in the world is completely customizable. You can place any objects in there anywhere you like. You can uproot the current existing objects, demolish the walls. Uh, and if, as in this instance, you had another want to buy a bed because you'll be staying there, you can even unlock new locations. There are 16 new locations in the game, each one based around a different theme. Uh, four of these are free play locations, which allow you to play basically any story you like. And 12 of them are story based locations like this one, Shoreline Trails, which has a, a basically a nerd-like character who's struggling to make it through, a mean and nasty sim who's been beating on him. And your job here in your wants and fears is to go through and help them out. You can see we've got some cool new objects such as the wave machine. Your success or failure on lots of these objects is, is generally based on your skills. So if you have a high body skill here, you'll perform cool tricks like that one. You also have complete control over time. You can pause the game at any point or fast forward it. But if you ever want to continue the story, you need to complete the gold once. The final gold want in this location is to beat the mean and nasty sim at foosball. This is dependent based on your body skill as well. So the character we've created so far has been working out a little bit so that he, he's doing all right. And by doing that, you again unlock the next location. But if you do happen to fail, then you do need to go over and work out. This is uh, one of the many skill objects in the game, builds body skill. You can choose lightweight lifting, which is very low risk, but very low reward. So you build skill very, very slowly. 
but uh, if you wanted to take a chance, you could have grabbed the medium or heavy weightlifting and seen if you could avoid an accident. Now I'll take you to the next location in the game, which is called Cliffside Retreat. It's based around food creation. It's essentially a giant bed and breakfast that other sims have created, so it's a good place to showcase some of our other new features. Here you can see another set of objects we've created new for this year, which are basically ingredient source objects. So there are certain things like herb gardens or fruit trees or aquariums, which if you buy them and then look after them, you can harvest new ingredients from. In the fridge, you'll find ingredients which you can just buy, uh, but you'll also find all the ingredients that you harvest from the world. So we've got some from the fruit tree just then. Here you can see that we can also get fish from the aquarium. Once you have the ingredients that you like, you just need to trek over to the fridge and then choose to get some ingredients. The coolest thing about the food creation system is that it's completely procedural and simulated so that you can combine any sort of ingredients you want and get a bunch of different effects. All of them will satisfy your hunger to a certain extent, but some of them will also create special effects. So if you put the right ingredients together, you can make aphrodisiac foods that make people sick. You can do all kinds of cool things. You can also, once you have the ingredients, use them on a bunch of different objects in the world. So if you wanted such as this to make carpaccio, you need to use your ingredients on the counter. If you use them on the stove, you would have got another food source. If you used them on the blender, you would have got another. So there's a lot of different things, a lot of variety in the world if you choose to experiment. Of course, once you've got them, you can choose to eat your own food or you can take it over and give it to another sim. So if you were telling a story, for instance, where you wanted to begin a romantic encounter with a sim, you could make an aphrodisiac food, then go over and give it to them. Obviously our alien character here is not interested in that kind of relationship, so he's just looking to make a, make a new friend by helping him out, so he's just giving him a normal meal. Each one of the locations in the game is based around a different theme. So this, as I said, was based around cooking and food. This new location we've journeyed to, Sunset Canyon, is based around an old movie studio lot and is therefore based around death and terrible accidents which have befallen most of the residents. Another cool feature that's very unique to The Sims universe is that you really are juggling a bunch of different characters in most locations. So here you can control pretty much everyone on the lot and tell them what to do. So you can jump between characters, finally end up on uh, this sort of cowboy ghost character and take him through the world. Ghosts have their own unique options, such as this one. He can, uh, he can choose to spook the poor hapless resident. If at any point you decide, no, it's time to come back to life, you can either challenge the Grim Reaper to a fiddling contest, which depending on your, again, on your skills, will uh, bring you back to life for free, or if you're not so good at it as our character here, you can just choose to pay for it. And that brings us to the end of a very short day in the life of our brand new alien sim.